Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to work on the uh, Yamaha 250MX some more. We're going to try to uh, sort out some of the problems that I found with the uh, uh, airbox. Uh, I'm going to change a little bit of a little bit of how that works. Uh, the uh, I, I found some rubber to go around the top of it. I think that's going to kind of let it. It's going to be more filled in keep stuff from uh, you know water and and mud and that sort of stuff from jumping into it uh, pretty much I think the way that I'm going to do it is the only way that air is coming in or anything's coming in is under the seat so that should protect that a little bit better uh, ran into some difficulties with getting the air box in when I modified it uh, going to mount the CDI controller in there also cut out those uh, straps in the top kind of kind of work on the uh, brake and the brake stay a little bit uh, not going to be able to finish it I don't think but uh, we're going to we're going to try uh, what else is there oh uh, going to try to get the uh, uh, nozzle or the intake finished on the airbox and uh, I've got the hose so we can go ahead and connect it up so we've got quite a few little things we're fabbing on today uh, it's nowhere near complete so we're going to be on it for a while yet but even with uh, uh, as we're going along we're almost back to the point that we were when I decided, I decided to change the rear suspension. So all, almost all that has come full circle. We're back to there and we'll be getting ready to work on building a expansion chamber for it. And that's where we were before. So I don't know that that'll come in the next one, but we'll see how much we get done today. So let's get over here and do it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get these gussets tacked in. Uh, these, what I was talking about, just right over the shock mount, just to tie all that together, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and tear the the uh, back wheel and swing arm and all that back off, and I'll finish welding all this stuff then. this way I'll be able to tie it in on the back side too and same song over here okay so I'll, I'll go ahead and weld those up when I, I'll get all this off back here in the back uh, so I don't get a bunch of BBs all over everything and uh, you know then we'll finish up what we need to do back here. Uh, what I've got to do is go ahead and get this bracket removed and then we'll, we'll mount everything back up and we'll extend the stay the brake stay and the rod the brake rod and see if we can't get that to work
it found a little weather stripping that I just cut up the middle here and that will take up a look, most of that gap, I think all of it, between the seat uh, support and the outside world. You'll be able to tell a little bit more when I get it back in there, but it adds a little height to it and it just gives it a little bit more uh, kind of fills in, I guess, if you will. I'm just gluing it on there with some weather stripping. This was just some car weather stripping, and what I did was I just uh, slid it right up the bottom here so that this part is up here at the top. Just something I found. I think it's some Ford weather stripping. If you got something like that laying around, it's just kind of what you, whatever you got laying around. And the other thing I did to this box is this is where I'm going to mount this. I drilled two holes in here and it'll touch the element, but it, it doesn't really interfere with it. So I think that's going to work out real good for me. And this is going to add a little bit of uh, uh, it'll keep stuff from splashing in there from from outside. Uh, it would ha otherwise it'll have to come in from under the seat. This it, no way for it to get through from the sides now. Add a little bit of glue to the back of this too. You know, if I was thinking when I made this, I probably should have made it just a little bit longer. But this, I think, is going to fix my problem. If it doesn't interfere with something when I'm putting it back in. I know that it'll squeeze here where these uh, grommets are, but I think it'll be okay. So that, that's taken care of the CDI box mount and that little extra space we had there. And I think I'm going to take this uh, rubber dust cap and that will go right in here like this. And I think that'll keep everything together. I may have waited too long to get it on there. That'll keep it together. There we go. I hope we're done with all the welding. That's what I was thought the first time. But changed my mind. Okay, I'm starting my pie cuts here for the intake. I've got one piece left to cut. I think. So let's get over there and do it. Okay, so I should need one more cut with a straight end on it. So we've got to go back and set the saw up for that.
And I don't have a clue how long, I just need to make it long enough. This one I'm going to make a little longer than the last one. I'm just going to tack these together, see what it looks like. <clears throat> Okay, here's our, our 90, I guess, whatever. It's gonna be the, uh, the intake. And I've got, you can see here how the rubber is gonna kind of seal this up up here. And I probably put that on premature because I've still got to weld this piece on the bottom. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, I may have to go a little at a time until um, you know so I don't get it too hot because this is going to go up in there and then it's got to be welded in but right now I can't get it in there I've got to take the box out let me show you so I purposely made kind of a short end and a long end because I just didn't know which one was going to work. But I think it'll go in there, but it's got, the box has got to, uh, it's got to be out. And that welded in there before it can go in. It's going to be tight, but I do believe it will go. And I, that's the long end. Actually, actually, this is the end I really was hoping would go towards the carburetor so I could get a good piece of uh, uh, hose on there. This, I think with this loop right here, it's gonna be fitting into this where it's kind of uh, starting to, to make the turn. So I think it'll work, but it's sure got to go in before, before the, uh, uh, box goes in So let me let me take that apart and see if I can get it in there Okay guys, I'm just a little bit Short of getting this thing in there by the time I bring it up And line up the hole in the back This rubber does make it kind of difficult, but it's just it's just not gonna fit uh, let me show you here. See, I keep running into the, the tube here as I'm coming up. So what I think I'm going to do is I think, and I thought this before, if I take this and uh, drill a couple holes in it and bolt it in, and uh, you know, I have to come in here and with the whiz wheel and cut these welds here and here and then I'll just bolt it in that way this piece can be out while everything is getting shoved in then it goes on I think that will do it I'm not missing much just barely right here at the bottom of getting this in I've tried just everywhere I can think of and it's just not going to work so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and before I do that, I'm going to drill two holes in here so that I know everything will line up.
All right, let me see if I, that'll go in there now. If it won't, then I'm gonna have to do something else. goes. Okay, so it's tight fit with that rubber in there. That really makes a big difference. I'll have to seal this pretty much with the uh, with some caulking. I was only able to to weld around the outside of it uh, probably 80 percent uh, just in in the front here but I'll go ahead and seal it with sealer all the way around and probably on the outside also okay so here's what we've come up with and we're all welded in except for right here in the front so I'll get some uh, caulking and get that hooked up on the outside and I'll also apply some to the inside here just to make sure. But I think that's just barely going to give us the room we need. And this is the hose that I come up with. This is really flexible stuff. It's uh, silicone and uh, it's uh, uh, kind of cloth reinforced here. It's kind of like a, a radiator hose, but a little bit uh, more limber. So that, that'll go right on there and we'll clamp it and we'll cut it to fit for the uh, for the carburetor and it's the same size on the carburetor. I probably would have rather had black but that's what I got so we'll call it sexy blue. Okay get the uh, CDI box mounted and I've Put the uh, sealant in here. Kind of hard to get out here underneath this. It's pretty close. I just don't think I need it. I've got it here, so that should be sufficient. I weld it as far around as I could reach. It'll just have to do. So now we'll uh, see if we can get this in. And like I said, the, uh, the element still goes on. It just touches it a little bit here in this corner but it's, I don't think it's going to interfere with anything. And the wires are plenty long to get to the, uh, the ones coming up from the engine and the coil there. Okay, we've got it installed. I used nylocks on all the mounting. And these are bolted back here, nylocks also. And I believe there's plenty of room here to get our hose in. Yep. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've just, I've got to get the fender back in. Looks, I think everything will mount right up with all that, but we're gonna trial fit it anyway. Okay, so there's our fender mounted, nylocks also on that. I think that was a, a good deal to put the rubber up there. Now any, any dirt has to come in from under the seat and uh, it's, you know, you're just not gonna get splash and rocks and stuff thrown up into the here as easy anyway. That seals it off pretty good. So I guess we need to get the engine back in and see how the uh, carburetor is going to fit up. Okay, I'm getting about four inches. So we'll go cut us a piece of that 
really cool blue tubing. Okay, I just uh, just got my four inches here and wrapped a piece of tape around it. Try to keep me going straight. So I'll go ahead and try to cut that straight with my razor blade. Probably gonna not be all that easy, but we'll see. Okay, not too bad. Hope it's long enough. I got enough for another one if I screw up. Let's pop this carburetor off and get it on there first. Of course, I do have to get the clamps on too, but I can always take those apart, need be. Kind of acting like it might want to go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's pretty good, I think. I don't have the bolts tight, but they're all in there, so it's not going to change much. Hey, I like that. Especially that blue. Okay, kind of the next thing we've got to do is extend the brake stay and the brake rod. Uh, we'll just be making an, a new brake rod and the brake stay will cut it somewhere in the middle and add a piece. Uh, but on the brake rod the, uh, this material is uh, oh, about 2 0.205, what is that in millimeter? Five, five and a quarter millimeter. Uh, in order to, to buy <coughs> five millimeter rod, it's, it's very expensive. <coughs> I'm not sure why. And you've got to buy quite a bit of it. I, you know, pretty close to a whole stick, <clears throat> and uh, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. So I take quarter inch, and I've got to turn it down just enough to get my thread on here. So I've got to take, what, about 40 thousandths off of it to get my six millimeter one uh, thread. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is set it up in the lathe and turn that down so I can thread it. Okay, in order to do what we want to do, we've got to, I just faced it here on the end. I'm going to put a little dimple in it so I can put it between centers. Otherwise, it just, it's so small, you just keep pushing the material away. So that's, I've done this on, uh, I think the uh, 125 MX also did the same thing. It's, you know, you can leave most of the rest of the rod the same length. It's just that, uh, or the same diameter. You just got to get it down so you can use your your special little nut and your uh, oh, forget, forget what they call the little piece that goes. It's like a trunnion, I guess. So that's what we're up to now. <clears throat> So we'll just put a little dimple in it so we can thread it. That should do it.
Okay, I think that's going to do it. Yeah, just fine. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take that out. We may have to do the other end just a little bit, but just to get it through the uh, the little bracket that goes up to the brake pedal. So you can see we just took a little bit off, about 50 thousandths. Okay, you can see here, um, just about even up with there, and we've cut this up so we can thread it to the same distance. And here's our extra length, about inch and three quarter. And uh, I don't know whether I'll use this bracket or yeah, I think I'll make my own because I really don't want to destroy this. It's good for another um, DT or RT. So uh, I'll just make it to fit this one and just a piece of loop metal like this and then uh, uh, peen it on the inside and then weld it on the outside. They just peened it on the inside there. So I think the first thing I'll do is go ahead and and put my threads on and we'll have to weld a little washer or something up here to uh, keep the spring from going up the rod. Okay, just see if we can get it threaded. And this on this one is a six millimeter one pitch. Okay, I had to go back to the drawing board here. I took too much off. I, I don't know what I was thinking. You've got to stay pretty close to six millimeter. So I just was under on that one. So I'll, so I ditched that one. And this is my next one. And everything looks good on it. The threads are good. I've got to weld the uh, washer right here in the same place as the original. This is the original. And uh, everything uh, works as it should there. So we've just got to weld this up here. It needs to be at the same place as it was on the old one, but we've still got a longer rod. So that's, so the next thing we need to do is make this part here, because I'll be welding part of that too. So this is to keep your spring from, uh, it's got to have a stop, so it can keep tension against the nut. Try to bend it on this. I think there's enough room. We're further along than we would have been. Now we got to drill a hole down here. Try to get it straight through both of them.
Okay, I've got this in and I'm going to deform the end of it here just a little bit before I braise it on. And to do that we'll just we'll heat that up to a cherry red and just whack it a couple times. That's kind of what Yamaha did too. Just won't be able to pull it all the way back now. Okay, it should hold that piece. Okay, let's focus on this now. Just cut her right about here in the middle. And we'll add to it what we uh, had to add to the, to the rod, uh, inch and a half I think it is. And I'll make a piece that goes in that'll go into both of both ends and have the inch and a half in the middle. And there's our piece. I'll go ahead and trim this down uh, to whatever it'll fit into the the tubing there, I'll have to go measure that. And I need to take a little bit off of this, but I'll do it at the end. Pretty close. Let me take take thousands off that.
Okay, get our adapter there. One side's a little tighter than the other. There we go. So I'll take that over to the bike and we'll line it up and then go weld it. All right. So we're going back here. And up there. So I just want to put me a line to line everything up with. Okay, now this, I don't know whether this is going to work yet or not, it's, uh, like I say, it's, I've had some setbacks because I've had to redo things, and I'm just not sure. This is... Remember I said I'd probably, I, well, I was going to have to cut this arm hair off. So we've just got to figure out how much and then how much, you know, because all this should stay put. It's not going to come any further down. It just has to swing up. So as long as the, the brake rod and the brake stay will come on and follow suit will be all right. But it looks like I'm gonna to have to probably take about an inch off of that lever up there, which in theory would make the actuator or actuating the foot brake a little bit more difficult, but it should still be okay. And I'm just gonna to have to take off some of the top and move this down, I think. Just gonna have to see. Like I say, it, we may end up putting a cable on it, but I want to try this first because it's a lot less difficult to do. Uh, if we do a cable, then I've got to come back in, and weld a, a cable stay here, and build a cable stay, and fasten it with a fastener on the inside after we drill a hole here. And I've looked in there, and it it looks okay. Uh, and this here will have to turn upside down and probably just uh, cut it off here and drill a hole in it for the cable. But uh, we're going to try this first, but I think we're probably about as far along as, as uh, I can get into this video today. So uh, next time we'll probably pick up right here and see if see if we're going to be able to make this work. Okay, we're making some headway here. Here's the uh, hookup of the air box.
pretty straightforward and it's straight in line. And we got everything painted up, got these uh, uh, gussets in, and like I said, the, uh, the rubber pretty much seals this up up here. So the only way that uh, air can get in there is from under the seat now. And I was able to cut that filter off. So that, that made everything uh, so it fits good under there. And we've got our hole here so we can tighten the clamp. Okay guys, there you have it. We got quite a bit done on the uh, 250MX today. It's just a little at a time, a little at a time. It's, uh, it, it does take some time to kind of think about it, figure out what I want to do, and, uh, and make it happen. Uh, just like anything when, you're, when you're, you don't have anything to go by, even if you did, it takes time to fab the stuff. But when you're, you're having to kind of come up with stuff on the fly, it, uh, it takes more time and a lot of times I, I do things and have to redo them because the uh, fitment issues or something. You know, it's always something. But anyhow, uh, I think we made pretty good headway and uh, maybe a, another video or two and then we'll be able to get started on the pipe. And I'm not, I'm, I, I built a couple pipes when I was a young man. Uh, they weren't the greatest in the world and I'm going to try to do a little better job with these but I absolutely know nothing about it other than I got to cut out a bunch of tin try to roll it and try to weld it so that it's uh, not going to look too shabby so I'll be learning as I go on that when we get there so hey thanks for going along on the ride and we'll see you next video